Hey you guys, welcome to your very first screencast. Um, we're going to be doing these things regularly, so um, hopefully you'll get used to them. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory, but I'll go over a couple things just so you're uh, not confused. Um, one of the nice things about screencasts um, that you need to remember is that you can always hit that pause button. Okay, so I know that sometimes in class you wish you had a pause button. If I'm blabbing a little bit too fast or moving too quickly through the notes, now you don't need to worry about that. You can hit pause anytime and uh, rewind whatever. So this is typically going to be um, a homework assignment. I don't think we'll, with the exception of today, watch these videos in class, um, which would be a little weird with me standing there. Um, but uh, if I'm ever absent, you might have one of these to watch in class. Otherwise, it's going to, again, be homework. So. Um, You'll see a title slide in the beginning. This one's called Rough Beginnings, Evolution of Virginia. So we're going to look at how Virginia um, started out. We've kind of already talked about um, the tough times in Jamestown, but we'll, um, we'll take Cornell notes today on that and see how it sort of grew a little bit um, into a more prosperous colony. Uh, but we'll leave it hanging a little bit because we're going to do a lab that shows uh, or that sort of examines that question of why Virginia became prosperous. Um, you'll always see at the beginning of one of these key vocabulary terms and so these are things you will need to know for a test um, and what you are asked to know is um, not only what it is but why it's important why we mentioned it so um, if there's ever a time and there will be um, if there's ever a time that I do not explain something very well in the video please uh, bring that up in class. So that's one of the things about these videos is that when you watch them at home, the next day uh, it's important that we talk about questions that you have, uh, things for clarification or interesting ideas or anything at all. Um, so that's what we, we need to do. You're not just going to be given this and, and left alone with it. We're going to talk about it together. All right. Um, so let's get started. Um, what you will need, and hopefully I've handed out by now, is your Cornell note sheet. Okay, so uh, the topic can be what I had on the very first slide, Rough Beginnings, Virginia. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the very beginnings. Um, and this first section is titled England Plants the Jamestown Seedling. This uh, PowerPoint here is pretty bland. Normally I have some images, things like that, and also questions for you to answer and bring to class. But um, I'm not going to do that this time around. Also, lengthwise, I'll try to keep these 10 to 15 minutes, hopefully 10 minutes. Um, this one might be a little long since I'm already three minutes in um, on the first slide. Um, okay, so in 1606, we had what's called a joint stock company, which basically is just a company um, in which different people, uh, you know, wealthy people, pool their money together to form a company. Um, so they each own stock in that company. Um, and this is called the Virginia Company of London obviously in England, uh, they received what's called a charter from King James I uh, of England. Uh, a charter, um, you can look that up as a term, but it's basically a grant um, to, to begin a colony, okay? a grant to start a colony. Um, and maybe we'll come up with a slightly better definition in class. Uh, but they received the permission um, to start a colony in the New World. What were they looking for? We've kind of already mentioned this when we talked about early explorers. Same sort of things. Um, gold, silver, precious gems especially, but also other resources like timber uh, and things like that. Um, so this company that sets out from uh, England lands in what they call Jamestown. And again, refer to your map in that um, Chesapeake Bay area. Um, and they land there on May 24, 1607. There were 144 colonists, 100 of them survived the voyage, so as we mentioned in class already, not easy to get across that rough Atlantic Ocean. Um, and there were people lost pretty much every, every time. Um, most of these people who came over, it's important to know, were fortune seekers. So they were the ones looking for the gold and the gems. Um, and that meant also that they had few practical skills. Um, you know, they weren't woodsmen, they weren't... Um, farmers in a lot of cases. They weren't real skilled in those areas. And so that sort of leads to the next one. Um, they didn't really know how to survive. Uh, there was a lot of expectation that they would get rich quick and go back home to England. Um, so you had things like disease. You had starvation. 
Um, there were hostilities with natives who didn't like these people encroaching on their land and mistreating them. Um, but this, you know, it's a harsh life, but this isn't a real harsh environment. It's in the Atlantic coastal plain, as we mentioned. So there's, you know, opportunities for farming and hunting. Um, but the settlers themselves were stubborn. One of the things they brought with them was a sort of racist worldview. Um, they didn't really want to learn from savages. And you learn in elementary school about how the natives, you know, taught um, pilgrims to plant uh, corn with fish so that the fish would fertilize the corn, things like that, and everyone got along, yippity skippity. Um, but the reality is that, for the most part, settlers were not willing to learn native ways until they were um, starving to death. Um, so in the beginning, not so much. And so that leads us into our next slide, struggles and starvation. In 1608, after a year there, relief ships arrived. So they brought food and other supplies and, and other colonists, new settlers. By the time that that ship got there, 38 people were left. Um, it's at that time that Captain John Smith takes over the town and forces the settlers into line. So in other words, that means he takes a sort of military role um, over the town and tries to organize things so that um, people are not you know, going to struggle quite as much. However, by 1609, um, of the 500 settlers who had come to Virginia, only 60 survived what was called the Starving Winter of 1609-1610, particularly harsh um, uh, weather. Um, so people didn't have stockpiles of food and, and froze to death but mostly starved to death. One primary source account here from a survivor, uh, we were constrained to eat dogs, cats, rats, snakes, toadstools, horse hides, and whatnot. One man out of the misery endured, killing his wife to eat her, for which he was burned. Many besides fed on the corpses of dead men. So people are, be are cannibalizing, but also, you know, if you're caught, you're punished for that. This is terribly punished. This man is burned. Um, so it's not a good time to be in Jamestown. Relief comes again, sort of, in 1610 when Lord De La, De La War, um, you can understand where the name Delaware comes from now, uh, comes to Jamestown uh, with supplies and um, military um, reinforcements, I guess. There was a lot of hostilities with the natives, and he was determined to squelch those. Uh, he, in fact, starts um, a war with uh, the Powhatan people, what's called the first Anglo-Powhatan War. Anglo means English, keep that in mind. So the first war between England and the Powhatans. There were three total by the time that all the wars are over in the 1680s. The Powhatan people are extinct. Um, in 1612, however, even though there was you know less uh, hostilities with natives, some people, that is some Jamestown settlers, ran away to live with the Indians, um, seeing that they were having an easier time. However, if they were caught, they were often tortured and killed. Um, so again, this idea that you don't mix with the savages uh, is firmly planted in a lot of people's minds. Um, when they came over from England, a lot of these settlers, they, they tried to create English-style farms. That's what they knew. That's what they thought would work. Um, unfortunately, those didn't work so well in the New World. Um, the farms were um, partially uh, contributed to problems with erosion. Um, they didn't plant certain crops that would do well in the New World, like corn. Again, that's what the natives plant, so savage. They overhunted, they over logged, um, and eventually they're depending on food from the native people through trade. Um, so that means that they need these relief ships to bring in goods and bring in food um, in order to survive. Um, so despite their best efforts, by 1616, the population's dwindling down still, and there are about 380 people. Uh, then an Indian attack comes uh, in 1622 that nearly destroys the colony. Some key changes happened. Um, we've seen the Disney movie Pocahontas, uh, which is historically inaccurate, but you probably have heard these characters. John Rolfe, uh, who marries Pocahontas. In 1614, this is sort of a way to reach peace, a peace settlement between the Anglos, the English, and the Powhatans. So that ends the war, which is good. Um, then in 1619, and this is very important, uh, the Virginia Company decides to allow 
people in Jamestown to have self-government to a certain extent. Um, and they were doing this to try to attract settlers from England, say, hey, you can go and have your own government here. Um, you don't have to listen to the king, although they do. Um, but also they wanted to give colonists more control over their lives, you know, because they were the ones living there. Um, so they let the settlers create an assembly. Uh, assembly is just a, you know, a group of elected people. Um, they were a specific group. They'd be white, male, landowner kind of people. Um, but they create this assembly um, where they create laws and regulations and, and things like that. And it's called the House of Burgesses. So the House of Burgesses is, is important because it's the very first um, form of self-government in America. Um, the other thing that changed, too, at this time is that people could own their own land. They could start to own their own land um, outside of the, the, you know, the king, right? Um, they could finally have their own chunk of land. And again, that's an attempt to attract settlers um, so they could grow their own crops and move away from Jamestown, the settlement. It's kind of spread out. Um, however, King James I, he wasn't very trustworthy of the House of Burgesses. He wanted it to be a little bit more under his control, so he kind of feared rebellion. Um, plus, uh, things got so bad as far as people just dying off all the time and native issues. Plus, it turns out the the Virginia Company is not making any money. Um, there's no precious gems or jewels, and the company actually goes bankrupt. So um, he takes away this charter from the company, and he makes Virginia in 1624 a colony of England. We call it a royal colony, meaning that England is directly controlling it. The Virginia Company is not making any more decisions. It's the government of England that is controlling it. Um, the House of Burgesses is allowed to remain, but James... Um, chose the governor um, and the people who, I don't think, I think you cut that off, Mr. P. Yep, I did. Um, he chose the governor and the assemblymen, the people who um, served in the House of Burgesses. Okay. Um, so transformation starts to occur. Uh, how do people make their money? Uh, lumber, again, the forests are decimated. Hemp, if you don't know what that is, you can look it up, be careful. Uh, turpentine, and then finally tobacco. And it's James Rolfe, again, who married, or excuse me, James Rolfe, John Rolfe, who married Pocahontas, um, who incidentally died of disease. Um, she, or excuse me, he introduced a sweet tobacco um, that was all the rage in England. It came from the West Indies. Um, it grew really well in Virginia, and it sold for a lot of money. So tobacco really starts to take off. Um, where do farmers get their labor? We mentioned already that it's these indentured servants coming over on the ships. Uh, their contracts usually are about seven years long, and um, they were owned by their masters, so life was not easy for them uh, at all. It was a, it was slavery. So um, by the mid 1700s, if we go way forward in future in the future now, uh, the Chesapeake area, Jamestown area. Um, we could even say Virginia, Maryland together. Um, you, if you looked at this area, you could see huge plantations. You could see uh, some fine houses. Um, there was an educated and wealthy aristocracy. So then we have to ask ourselves, what happened? How did this transformation take place? And uh, what was society like um, by the mid-1700s? So um, this is what's going to be the subject for our lab. However, all these notes you should have in uh, your Cornell style on your Cornell style sheet. Okay, um, you don't have to write out the uh, definitions um, of these, uh, like in a separate paper or anything. But in your notes, I would like in parentheses go ahead and and write out the definitions, just so you know. All right, so that's it. This is how we uh, how we do the video screencasts. Um, and again, this one's about 14 and a half minutes, so it's longer than normal. So don't fear. All right, we'll see you guys next time.